Let's talk about Amazon CloudFront. CloudFront is a content distribution network. And what that means is it can take your website's static assets and push them throughout the world so that they're served up from places closest to your users. So let's look at this map right here that demonstrates some of Amazon's points of presence around the world, meaning where they have some data centers. So you see a couple on the west coast of the US and a couple on the east coast. What if you had your website hosted here, perhaps over in Northern California, and you wanted it so that it served up really fast to people over in Africa? Well, at, without any unique configuration, anytime someone in Africa visited your website, there would be a good amount of latency or lag in terms of requesting a website and any of its content um, all the way over there. So the way that we can get around this is creating a website anywhere that we want and simply pointing the URL to the content distribution network that is called CloudFront. So let's go ahead and walk through this process. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a website. Now I have a website that is currently hosted in S3. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. It says it's a public bucket. Now it doesn't have to be an S3 bucket. It could be anything with the domain name. It could be bobstennisshoes.com. Like whatever it is that you have that serves up static HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, those sorts of things. Um, all you need is something with the domain name and CloudFront can do the rest. Um, so I have a website here, and if I click on it, I can see that I have three files on there. Uh, it's a very simple website. In fact, it just looks like this. And if I right click, you can see that there are two parts to it. There's the HTML, and then there's secondarily a second file, which is an image. This could be a much more complicated website. I just wanted to show it this way for purposes of demonstration. Okay, so this is my simple website. And as it's currently set up, as an S3 bucket, this website could handle about 5,500 requests per second. Uh, if I had a high volume website, this would not be sufficient. So in addition to putting content closer to users, another reason why I use a content distribution network is so that I can scale basically infinitely. So again, let me go back to the image. Um, two things about CloudFront. One is it pushes, pushes my website content all over the world. And then second, it makes it so there's not a limitation in how many pages I can serve up. So even so whether I'm using an S3 bucket or a small website, it doesn't, you know, like something on a traditional server like an EC2 instance, um, it doesn't matter how big or small that thing is. Once you start reading the files, through the content distribution network. It has relatively infinite scalability. Um, the other thing is the way that this is gonna work is once I enable CloudFront, um, we have these things called points of presence or edge locations throughout the world. So imagine that there are these little dots all over the world. Once we hook up the content distribution network, my index page for my donut site as well as my image are going to be pushed to the edge locations, uh, in essence, little data centers, uh, wherever people are request. Well, one way to say this is it pushes it everywhere in the world, and that's relatively true, but there's a little caveat there. It actually doesn't push your content there until people request it. So if somebody requests your cat website or your donut website over here in Europe, it's gonna first check the local cache from the edge location, and if it doesn't find the information, it's gonna go get it from your website and then simultaneously deliver it to the end user and put it in the cache so that all future requests are then gonna come from there. So they don't preemptively populate your content everywhere in the world, but as soon as people start requesting it, it'll get cached everywhere in the world. And so that's the, the magic or some of the magic of CloudFront and any content distribution network. Okay, so uh, as it relates to this, uh, if I go to this bucket and I go under properties and I go to the bottom, uh, this is the URL of my website and notice that it has S3 in the domain name. I could put in a real domain name here, but just to save some costs, I'm leaving it as just the default website. So here's where my website's located. And if I were to click on this again, you'll see the exact same thing. There's my website. 
and now I want to make it even more scalable and distributed throughout the world. So I will go over to my AWS console and I will type in uh, CloudFront. There we go. Global Content Delivery Network, Distribution Network. Um, and the way that you distribute your content for a website is by creating something called a distribution. Now a distribution is the configuration of configuration settings for what you want to share throughout the world. Uh, the key part of that is what's the website. But in addition to the website, you can uh, configure some additional things that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, really the only thing you have to do to go from having a website that can't handle a lot of traffic to one that has worldwide distribution and infinite scalability is just simply copying and pasting the domain name uh, right here where it says origin domain. So for me, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to copy the URL of my uh, website, paste it in here. Uh, again, if you had Bob's shoes or whatever, you could just paste it right in there and you're done. It's going to grab your HTML, your JavaScript, your CSS, uh, images, everything. That's all you have to do. Uh, so I can just literally go down to the bottom and click uh, create distribution and then in a few minutes I'm going to get a different URL that instead of having S3 in there has something that indicates that it's hosted in CloudFront. Now I don't have to use these boring no, uh, domain names neither for my S3 website nor for my CloudFront website but uh, I do have to do a little bit of uh, additional settings to set up my own domain name that's um, running through CloudFront that's outside the scope of this demo um, but you'll get the general idea from this. All right, so all I need to do is cl uh, click the Create button at the bottom, and then it'll start doing its magic. It takes a few minutes. Um, let me, let's just look at some of the other settings here. Uh, you, because this is basically um, a way to distribute a website throughout the world, you can add header information to your files that are served up. You can change how the information is cached. Uh, generally speaking, how it's saved. Um, we're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, you can, um, let's see what else is going to be good here. Uh, you can affect your pricing by selecting either all the edge locations, points of presence throughout the world, or you can select some others and your cost would go down, but potentially the locations of your content are going to be a little bit further from users. So the most expensive and best performance option is this first one that's selected. You can put firewalls around stuff. Um, there is an option here that I seem to have scrolled past um, where you can also modify the behavior. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it here at a glance, but um, there's a place where you can modify the behavior such that um, you can have uh, I think this is it right here, um, where you can have it go through something called Lambda at Edge, where the incoming request to your origin server, meaning like your bucket or your website, can, can be filtered and manipulated both coming in and going back out. Uh, that's for doing complicated things like A-B testing and serving up different images to different users, um, all complicated stuff that you don't need in an intro. So for now, we simply are copying um, the original website and making it globally distributed and giving it really massive scalability. So I'm just going to click create distribution and it is going to take a little while for it to be ready. Um, when it is ready, this website domain name right here will become functional. So you see just a strange sequence of characters dot cloudfront dot net. Uh, if I copy that and put it right here. Notice that it is a secure URL and it's on the CloudFront distribution network. Uh, right now the content is not there but momentarily it will show up and it will be identical, exactly identical to this and what in terms of what's being served up. It's kind of the, the magic here about this is that Everybody around the world is typing is going to type in the exact same domain name, and it could be your regular domain name. And what's going to happen is, um, for wherever they are, they're going to go to the local. Um, they're going to have a look up to their local DNS provider that says, "Hey, where is the 
um, content related for this domain name that I just typed in. And even though people are pulling up that website from all over the world, um, when they do that little lookup, this special domain name right here is going to return an IP address and an, of, of an edge location that's closest to them. So sounds confusing, but it's kind of kind of magical. Everybody types in the same domain name, but everybody gets a different IP address based on a location that's closest to them, and they get the identical content. All right, we'll give this a little shot one more time here to see if it's working yet. Um, there we go. Uh, in the time that I was stalling 30 seconds or something, it started to be pushed out. So as of this exact moment, if people type this in uh, anywhere in the world, it would pull the content from my server where I have it hosted. I think I have it in the North Virginia East region. Uh, anywhere where I pull that from, uh, it's going to push the, the content closest to, the, to where the uh, client is, the user is who's pulling up that information, and it's going to cache it there for a certain period of time. So that's just a brief introduction to how CloudFront works. There's additional configuration that you can do. But um, with just with that, you can go from having a, a mom and pop website to something that could scale uh, almost to the level of like an Apple or a Facebook or a Google. Like it's just massively scalable just by entering in that URL to that first box on the distribution creation page.